Welcome in, everyone. We are in college football week three already. Feels like the season is just humming along already. It's incredible. We are BTB Analytics. Kevin, Seth, and Steve back with you. We got a lot of matchups to break down, talk about some efficiency landscapes, give you some model predictions, all in the name of making good, valuable bets. You're going to want to stick around for it all. Let's get into it. Give a damn about a hater when I feel like it. Not today, yep. not today, oh. not today, not tomorrow. Get out my way, please. I'm trying to get paid. Not today, yeah. not today. College football week three. Crazy. Already crazy. We got a lot of good matchups to get into. Friday night lights. How about mm. it already? Let's Ooh. kick it off. We got the, the University of Arizona going up against K-State. Okay, I got a, I got a kind of a open-ended question for you guys. So, U of A played Northern Arizona last week. Your alma maters, U of A and mine, NAU. Did, did did Arizona fall victim to what you want to call the colloquial look ahead spot? Because I was not, I mean, it was it was not a good performance by them last week. Or is there a real cause for concern in your opinion, Seth? Look ahead and um letdown spot, right? Like so, you know, barely making it out of New Mexico, kind of have a huge offensive performance, and then the look ahead to Kansas State. So they, they, there may be a two for there. Um at, look, this this is I'm gonna break these numbers down. This is this is some crazy stuff. Um, yeah, let me just talk the numbers. So, first and foremost, Arizona can't stop anyone. They are 128th in points per echo. You pretty much you get to the 40 yard line or better with Arizona, you're scoring, okay? And you're scoring a touchdown at that. But we'll, let's look at the actual EPA number. So Kansas State on offense is the 64th pass uh passing offense, but they're the 16th. Rushing offense, Arizona is the 81st pass defense and 47th um, rush defense. And then Arizona is the 26th passing um, offense. Rush, they're the 50th. K-State on defense, 119th against the pass and 27th against the rush. I don't think either of these teams are going to be able to stop anyone. I think we don't even talk about over-unders here. This thing opened at 55, now at 58. I don't think that there's a number that's too high. I'm laying 100. I know that, you know, I, I say that tongue in cheek here, but th these teams literally, it is good on good. Like their weaknesses, each team can exploit. Arizona is going to be able to throw the hell out of this ball, and Kansas State's going to be able to run how and wherever they want and probably be able to pass against this Arizona team that we talked about. Can't stop anybody. And basically, you get to the 40 yard line, you're scoring a touchdown. So over all day. Now, that being said, in a shootout, I think you want to have the points. Um, I think there's seven and a halfs in the market now. And eight sounds about right, just so you can push in overtime with the two-point conversion rules. You put a gun to my head, I got to be a homer, bear down Arizona. But I think the real value, unfortunately, is, is the over. I don't see how any of these teams stop each other. It's just an inevitable, someone's getting to a higher number and the game ends. Steve, what do you, what do you think? Does that sound about right? Yeah, I mean that that that's one hundred percent right. I mean, listen, talk about the 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 over under being one hundred. I mean, that was literally the total of Arizona's first game <laughs> yeah. against New Mexico, sixty one to thirty nine. Um, you, hey, listen, you know, this is the battle of the Wildcats, and again, as a U of A alumni, you know, this is definitely Arizona's going to show that they're the real the real Wildcats here. Now, with that being said, I think Seth's spot on. I mean, you look at K State's uh, game last week against Tulane. I mean, Darian Minson threw for 342 yards, 218 of those in the first half. Fafita is a better quarterback than Mensa is. And, oh, by the way, we have arguably one of the best receivers in the country, definitely top five in Tessa Roy McMillan. So, I mean, this is going to be an absolute slugfest. Yeah, I think 55 is way too low, absolutely too low. You see U of A bounce back here. I don't know what it is about NAU, but they historically play us tough. I mean, yeah. they, they beat us three Shout years ago. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, but, you know, in all seriousness, I mean, you know, you look at this again, you look at the the matchups here, this definitely favors a shootout. And, and this is the classic game of whoever has the ball last is going to win. Now, K-State barely, barely survived against Tulane last week, and it took a strip sack fumble, return for 60 yards, and a very questionable offensive pass interference call against Tulane that would have at least tied it with a touchdown. So 
I'm not I'm not sold here that this is going to be a more than a one possession game. I, I'm with Seth here. You get seven and a half. I feel pretty confident. You get eight or eight and a half. I don't know how you pass up those points. I really don't. Yeah. Yeah. To your point, Seth, you said this open at the total because I'm 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 peeking at this now with your with your take here. So 55 and a half at open 58. Now it's at 58. So points, points, points. We're expecting in this one, it sounds like. I don't okay. yeah I I mean you look at these numbers they jump out at you not only are both these teams efficient on offense but literally each defense struggles against the thing that they're the strongest on so it's like it is it is just a, a kind of a synergy here uh and look like I said Arizona can't stop anyone so I you know they couldn't stop NAU can't stop New Mexico K-State's gonna have success success here now the thing is you know we haven't really seen Fafita in that offense actually go against a, a non you know what was that are the one are those both fps teams no what no, no, no FBS. Oh, yeah fps like you know second tier g you know g5 um <laughs> yeah. yeah fps right so so second class citizen i mean we haven't seen him go this will be the first big t- big 12 matchup right um and so mm-hmm. what does that look like um now mm-hmm. kansas state did struggle against tulane so it's kind of tulane i would put in the middle of the pack um so yeah i don't know i bear down arizona but how I, much yeah. do how much does arizona's hopes dwindle of winning the big 12 if they lose this game um I, that's hard to answer because kansas state's touted and i think one of the betting favorites so um if you lose to the favorite is how much does that alter things and then you got to factor in what's going on with utah and cam rising and potentially mm-hmm. injured which again we called um and you know if if again it 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 becomes k-state as number one and arizona loses to number one can you recover from that maybe yeah i mean are you talking about big 12 yes Kevin? yeah i mean i i can't i can't imagine that there's a undefeated big 12 champion i think you could you can argue based oh, God, off no. of yeah right and so if we're talking one loss you know there's definitely time to bounce back here um you know k-state has us and you talk about look ahead they have okay state next um, and so, you know, you look at it, I think Utah, quite frankly, probably has the easiest path schedule wise. But like Seth Mission, you know, Cam Rising in that hand, what does that look like? You throw them out the mix. It, I think it's quite literally anyone's game. And then if you have two losses or less in the Big 12, I, I think you're still pretty comfortable having a fighting chance come championship time. But, you know, listen, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Arizona's going to win and it's not going to matter. So we had seven teams in the Big 12 forecasted all within one total win from each other anybody can win the big 12 yeah. it's going to the, the the big 12 is just the new pac 12 period yeah, yeah. chaos will happen it, it's going to happen chaos, it almost happened last yep. week this is when we're going to get in the thick of it so to answer your question it's not ideal but it's not ideal for either of these teams to be honest right. and and you you could argue that maybe if kansas state loses to arizona is arizona now the favorite so it's kind of this is an, a unique situation it's going to be a good game yeah, yeah, I agree. So going from Friday night lights then to a packed, absolutely packed Saturday morning slate. Starting off, let's head to a next matchup here. LSU and South Carolina. College game day going to this one. So this should be should be romping really? and rolling for sure. Um go Tigers. Go Tigers. So this this one for me is a very fascinating matchup. And I want to I want to get your your feedback or your take on it, Seth. So basically you have strength on strength here. You have an efficient pass offense for um, LSU meets an efficient pass D for yeah. South Carolina. LSU is the number three, number three team in total EPA and an EPA per game through the first couple of weeks. And on the flip side, South Carolina is number two in total EPA allowed and EPA per game. So which one, which one buckles first here? Yeah, no, it, it's a good question. And in, in my analysis of this game, I saw something that was really interesting. So you're exactly right. LSU's pass offense, 22nd, Versus South Carolina, we have the number one, number four pass defense. Now LSU can't stop the run, just like last year. They're 112th against um, are running the ball, and and they're going up against South Carolina, um, mm. who's 88th. But on on LSU's defense, um, they can't stop the pass. 129th, and then 38th. Um, South Carolina, 87th um, passing offense and 118th rushing defense. But this is the crux here. Run rate over expected. LSU, non, not surprisingly, is throwing the ball 18% more than an average team. Well, that makes sense. LSU is good throwing the ball. But this is the kicker. 
South Carolina is more efficient with the pass, but yet they're running the ball 13 percent uh, more than average. So the question for me is, are the Gamecocks going to have the balls to throw the ball in this game? If they do, they they can easily upset LSU. They could easily win this game. The question becomes there for me, why aren't they throwing the ball if this is where their strength lies? Um, and I don't have the reason. I don't have the answer. But, I mean, LSU is very susceptible. They have not fixed the problems that they had last year. Again, 129th against the pass. They were, I think, dead last last year. So they're pretty much exactly where they were. They didn't fill those holes in the secondary. They're not getting the pressure I think they thought they would get um, in the defensive line. And for me, the Gamecocks throw the damn ball. Yeah, Steve, to Seth's point, um, LSU is only a seven-point favorite in this one. So S uh, South Carolina is a seven-point dog. They went into Kentucky last yeah. week and nine-and-a-half-point dogs and just romped them. So what's stopping a repeat? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, to Seth's point, I think you – if you're LSU, it's, I, I think it's a double-edged sword because I think if you're you're LSU, you want them to throw the ball. You want to get in, in a shootout. You want to do what you're the most adept at doing and trying to beat them at their own game and beat them at their own strength. And I look at it kind of the opposite way in the run rate over expected. I mean, there's no doubt in anybody's mind. Nussmeyer, uh, Nussmeyer is definitely uh, you know a very good quarterback. He's elite throwing the ball. Um, LSU's uh, passing offense is going to be absolutely potent, as it is almost every year. Um, but when you lose Jaden Daniels and Logan Diggs, which is your number one and number two rushing quarterback, or uh, excuse me, number one and number two rushers, um, you know, what do you, how do you replace that? What do you do with that? And we saw kind of LSU and USC kind of go back and back. But if you're LSU, yeah, lean into what you're good at. Because to Seth's point, if you like running the ball and you're Boston College and you're down two possessions a little early, like, oh, LSU gets the ball first, they score, whoops a daisy you have a stop and LSU can score again. Well, all of a sudden that puts a lot of pressure on you to try to flip the script here. And if I'm LSU, like that's where I feel comfortable, especially if my biggest weakness is I can't stop the run. Let me take that away from you. Let me make you feel forced to change up your game plan to keep up with me. So I'm pretty interested to see how this is going to turn out. Um, we saw this at minus eight. Uh, we've got, got it bought down back to minus seven. I suspect it'll probably stay somewhere around there, but I think it's going to be a hell of a matchup. But are you sure LSU can throw against them? We're talking about the <clears> fourth <throat> overall pass defense. I think they're going to have to. I don't think they have a choice. I, well, I guess, but, I guess but that, that's 112th kind of against the rush. What if you can't? What's and that? then and then if 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 you're South Carolina, if you're going to try to throw this ball. You have to. They're the 129th pass defense. So you're going to try to throw the ball. And if LSU can't, they're 112th rush offense. Like this could get. This could be. The, look, the, you know, if this happens, it's going to be like, oh, my gosh, how did this happen? But the, the data kind of show a different tale here that this is not that crazy. The market is kind of speaking. This is a one possession game. I, I'm scared if I'm a Tigers fan. And this is going to be, in my opinion, this is like a, a chess matchup. But the strength on strength is going to be a, a good matchup in Fair. which team can Maybe not necessarily be more creative, but can really tap into to, to your point, Steve. Can tap into their strengths more quickly, and or maybe for a longer period of time during this game. So, should be a good one. College game day, like I said, is going to be there. So, hoping hoping it's not a hoping it's not a one sided affair. But sticking in the early slate, boys. Okay, we go from LSU and South Carolina. Let's move to Bama and Wisconsin. All right. We I asked the question early with U of A. Is Bama here at risk of a letdown slash look ahead? Because guess who they play next week? Georgia. At home. <laughs> yeah. So Bama coming in as, you know, 15, or excuse me, 14 point, or excuse me, 15 point favorites. You know, our, our, our number puts us at 14. Um, you know, there is, there is unfortunately some, uh, <laughs> some value on, on Wisconsin, depending on the number that you could have got. But, yeah, how much how much of this matchup is? Are you looking at Bama in this one, Steve, and saying, "Yeah, handle your shit. Don't look ahead to Georgia." Yeah, you know, I, I think if it's a Nick Saban coach team, you know, you don't even utter those words, right? But I mean, let, let's let's be real. I mean, let's look back. I mean, what a difference a year makes, right? Because if you look back at this time last year, right, when Alabama had to play USF again, you know, that was a three-three game at halftime. 
Alabama was only up by a touchdown until the last minute in the fourth quarter. I mean, they were on upset alert that entire game. You had Jalen Miller, who was a bench the game before uh, when they lost to Texas. Shout out, we were there. Uh, and then you had Tyler Buckner, who started the game and got benched in that game. So on their third quarterback, trying to figure out, can anything go right for them? Fast forward to this year, and now all of a sudden, Alabama has 105 points scored in their first two games. I mean, this offense is for real. You can see it there on their uh, offensive way to EPA per play at 5.27. I mean, they're humming like you'd expect an Alabama machine to hum. So um, look ahead game. Uh, yeah, sure, it's Georgia, right? And that's the big bad wolf that they have to get ahead. I'm not sure if I fight by that at this point in time. Um, look, Tyler Van Dyke in Wisconsin, you know, they're definitely taking a right step in the offense, what we, I think, consider a traditional Wisconsin offense, especially in the grand yeah. merge days. But I don't think it's going to be enough. I don't know how it is going to be enough. You kind of see the market kind of go bounce and forth. So this opened at minus 14. It got up to 16, back, got bought back down to minus 14. Now it's at minus 15. So the market, again, it's early. But they're agreeing that that two two possessions, really two touchdowns, are not enough for Wisconsin. And, and I think I kind of have to agree with that. I'm, I'm not sure it's the Alabama team. I think it's too undisciplined to get caught napping. Um, we know they really have to kind of prove who they are this year. Yep. I, I, I agree. Anecdotally, we, we all three know the model likes the 15 and a half. We bet it. When I took a dig, a kind of look under the hood, I can't lie. I'm pretty scared. I, I, I've, mm -hmm. I think I've concluded why the model has it as a bet and I'm going to lay it out for you, but it's, it's, it's scary. <laughs> Wisconsin's the 85th uh, most efficient pass team. 28th on the run Alabama 12th on defense against the past 66th against the run Alabama seventh passing offense rush their 22 Wisconsin 66th on defense against the past 81st against the run so basically Wisconsin's not going to be stopping Alabama it doesn't look like no matter what Alabama wants to do whether they want to run whether they want to pass they definitely have the edge the thing that stands out to me is the pass rate over expected or run rate over expected. Bam is running the ball 7% more than an average team. But even though Wisconsin has the 85th best or worst pass offense, they're throwing the ball 3.4% more than an average team. If Wisconsin is going to cover this number, they have to run the ball. And the thing that sticks out, I think this is the stat that's driving this game. Wisconsin's one edge is early down success rate. This team has a 56% success rate on first downs. They are going to have to run the ball. They're going to have to have early success rates. They're going to have to be getting three, four, five, six yards on those first downs uh, on the ground. And they're just going to eat up clock and eat up possessions, have long methodical drives. If they do that, you cover the 15. If you don't do that, Alabama is going to win by 30. It is a very uncomfortable bet, and that's really what this game is going to come down to. Um, and pretty much Bama has the ev edge everywhere except Wisconsin rushing the ball. And will they actually do it? Right now, they're throwing more than they should, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, th this total is sitting at 50 and a half, and it feels like, to your point, Seth, like Wisconsin not, is not only going to have to run the ball, they're going to have to they're gonna have to score 25, maybe 30 points to, to cover here. I, I don't... It is hard, it's hard for me to see how uh, the, the Alabama offense is going to be slowed down. So can I, I want to disassociate from being the model. It's a model pick. We know what goes in the model. It is what it is. It's one game in, a, you know, probably a 150 to 200 bets we're going to make via the model. I did, looking at this data, I, I did think of this angle that popped into my mind. Is this the first or the last time you can buy Milrow for Heisman? at a good price, given who we know they're about to go on to play. We know that Wisconsin's one, I don't know, shining hope, so to speak here, is that they could probably stop the run. Alabama is the seventh most efficient passing offense. Is this all of a sudden where we see the game plan for Milrow to throw the ball more than they have been? He goes off. They do win by 28, 14, whatever. They have you know, a decisive win. And they go on, you know, to have an incredible season. Is this the last time you can buy Milrow at a good price? It's interesting. Yeah, I mean, that's no. Go ahead. Okay. No, I didn't have anything to say. Was, that's interesting. 
Yeah, no, I, yeah, I, I, I think it is. And I think you have to at least entertain the idea, right? Um, because right, we think about, you know, who's going to be the best player on the best team in terms of these, these Heisman's based things. And we know it's a, it, it, they love the quarterbacks. And so can you get someone who, I mean, look, again, look at where he was last year. If you can make Milrow stand out as this exceptional player and then dethrone the big, bad bulldog, right? Go for, I, I think Going you have a hell of a case. Yeah, you know, you go, he yeah. there. He's going to have the resume. This team right. clearly is going to be good enough to make the playoff. They're probably going to be close to, you know, f- I don't want to say for sure going to the SEC championship, but they're going to be in the running. Like he, the resume will definitely be there, and this sure. game is could just be the the. I mean, they already look really good, but if they go and they win by thirty at Wisconsin, is this now all of a sudden ESPN Monday morning is? Jaden Milrow for 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 Heisman. What what is the price, Kevin? Do we? I can't remember if Unabated has Heisman um, odds up in their their new um, college um, futures. Shout out Unabated uh, for their um, new features for running Sims. It looks like plus one thousand on Fanduel is what okay. the number is. Yeah, they Unabated does not that I've seen. It's it's mainly yeah. team based. They have everything else, odds. over unders, yeah. championship, make playoffs. But yeah, so we're getting from the producer pl- plus. Plus one thousand. I I'm just it's an angle here. I, I what all I just want to point out here is if the train's leaving the station and this is going to be my you know this is going to be plus five hundred Monday morning. This might be the last time to to get on the train at a reasonable price. Twelve hundred DraftKings. We don't really like DraftKings, but <laughs> maybe last time to yeah take a, take Mill Road a good price will not and will never be the last opportunity for you, Mister or Mrs. Viewer. To hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We appreciate it greatly. Um, helps us helps us grow. Helps us continue to give you guys good content here. So, all right, that'll be that'll be another interesting matchup. But let's move on. Truck ahead here. Another early slate game. This is a packed, packed early slate. Mm-hmm. Even though this, I don't. I'm not going to be going out of my way to watch this one. But FSU and Memphis. Just kind of open ended question here. My my notes. The only thing I wrote here for this game was, what's left to like about FSU. Is there anything? <laughs> there's not. There's not. And the data are worse. The data are a lot worse. Uh, I, let, let me just go through it. Memphis, when we're talking about um, offensive pass efficiency, 44th. Rush, 35th. FSU's defense, they're 132nd against the pass. They're 107th against the run. FSU's offensive numbers, 86th passing efficiency, 120th rushing efficiency on offense. Memphis has the has a huge edge here. Defensively, 31st pass defense, 26th rush defense. I mean, this is insane. And the other thing that jumps off the page, Memphis, Memphis's echo rate over expected, 26%. They're getting to the 40 or better, 26% more than an average team. This is this is this game is making me want to go and run. And this is the squarest thing you're probably going to hear me say in a long time. I want to bet Memphis money line. I think there's yeah. insane value in betting that number. Plus one plus two ten is the best number I could find. Um, and and it's clear that the data they don't know what to do. They don't know whether to lean on Uyungle, who's not efficient, or to lean on their pass game. I mean, this is a team that's throwing the ball seventy or sorry seven percent more than expected. But they're the 82nd pass uh, offense. I mean, they're literally having to decide between the lesser of two evils. Yeah, and and, and can we pull up the uh, the landscape, the efficiency landscape here? In case in case you're not a, a a verbal learner, in case you're a visual learner, here's what you're looking at here. In the top right hand corner, um, what you're looking at here is you know looking at uh, offensive uh, production on the 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 x-axis and defensive on the y so you, where you want to be is the top right corner that's good offense good defense you can see memphis is that top right corner just above miami and you can see florida state's in that bottom left corner um kind of around vanderbilt byu those are the two corners of the most extreme wow. bottom left is the worst top right is the best that is a visual representation of what's going to happen in this Memphis FSU game. Um, yes, I'm with you 100%. I am fading FSU and DJU until they can prove me otherwise. I mean, you look at this game, you go into the beginning of the season. Okay, boss, uh, no, I'm sorry, Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech's supposed to be a get-right game for the CFB stuff, right? CFB 
stuff. All right, whatever. They lose that game. Okay, cool. Now you got Boston College. That's supposed to be a get right game for the Georgia Tech loss. And then they get absolutely destroyed. And here's the thing. In that game, uh, BC had twice the time of possession as FSU. And, and here's my point, because I, I agree with you 100%, Seth, that the defense is, you know, definitely deserves 100% a big part of blame what's going on here. But the offense has got to get right. When you look at that FSU game, they had three straight three and outs. Um, they ended up having five for the game. And DJU just could not hit anybody to keep those drives going. And so when you leave a defense, you trot them back out there, series in, series out. They're going to get worn down. They're going to get tired. And you're going to see gaps open up. And that's going to benefit the opposing offense. And that's exactly what we saw. So, I mean, this is just I, – I don't understand – what's going on here and we always say like you know especially over the long run the wisdom of the market is smarter than any one person but i don't care cue up kanye can't play either. can't tell me nothing can't this line me. opened at fsg minus four it moved to minus seven it got bought back a little bit down to minus six and a half to me this is fsu living off of their brand name and memphis is clearly the better team here and i'm with you Seth. i've already sprinkled a little bit on memphis money line we have this as a spread bet, but I cannot fathom any way that this is a bad money line spot to back Memphis, but definitely not a bad spot to back the spread, even though it is moving against us. No, it's we just see value here. I wanted I want to touch on that point though when you said brand name, because this is the only category that FSU has the edge. And if you look at the team talent on the uh projection card from the model output, you'll see that FSU ends up being the 13th most talented roster. Memphis second, uh, 72nd most mm -hmm. talented roster. So yes, they have the, the dudes and the brand name, but I just, this is the caution of using the transfer portal to try to fill in your gaps. You can, you can on paper have a really talented roster. It's not the same thing that Georgia is doing. It's not the same thing that Ohio state is doing. You have to still develop talent. Um, yeah. Memphis you don't pay the right guys or shit out of luck. I guess right. so. I guess so. And they Nick clearly did not pay the right guys. Um, yeah. Look, uh, it's one bet, so I'm not going to get too high on this. Um, but I'm either going – I'm going to do two units on this game. It's either going mm -hmm. to be another double dip and grab the seven while it exists, or I'm going to throw a whole unit on money line. I haven't decided yet. They're both EV. They're both EV based on our numbers. Th these are both good bets to make. I only concern myself a little bit. Does Memphis win by th or um sorry, does Florida State win by three and you don't you don't cover the money mm -hmm. line, but you cover the spread? You know, I I try to avoid those situations from taking a good bet and being right and trying to get a little too greedy. So I probably opt towards buying another unit on the seven, but we bet it at a five and a half. I'd feel comfortable any number five and a half, six, seven, you know, whatever. Give it yeah. to me. Go tigers. Could be a slaughter. I, I forecast it. We're sitting here Tuesday. This will not close anywhere near where it's at right now. Hmm. So you think it you think it drops like three and a half or something? I think it gets back to the back to the five, back to the four. I think I think okay. it, all right. There's just so much value. What stat are we missing? We use right. every stat. They don't right. got different stats. There isn't <laughs> magical stat that exists, like, oh, you're so far off. I mean. This team is literally dominated on every single front. And this is the this is the kind of really big nail in the coffin. Georgia State is a good team. They mm -hmm. are. It, the market was buying them. Why are they good? They're really efficient against the run. Memphis, the 35th rushing offense. This is a team that is going to be good against the run. It's their one, the, the thing that like each team they've played can do really well. They're getting three in a row. I, I just don't know how all of a sudden they stop the thing that we have the most data on. They can't stop the run. Yeah. We need to move on before I get too excited and, and start hammering Memphis or else uh, could get ugly because you're right. Because it's it, it's not looking good. It's all signs point to Memphis. But we got one more game to cover before we get into some uh, landscape and model predictions here. Boston College at Missouri. All right. This one is fascinating to me uh, for a couple of reasons. So Missouri the only team in the nation so far to not allow a point. Yeah. Now you could say, okay, well, what's the competition been? And you could, I'll hear some arguments, you know, to, to that end. But I think Boston college probably needs some flowers here at this point in the season. So, okay. They beat, you know, they beat Florida state. We just got done talking about how shitty they are. Okay. Maybe that's not as impressive as it was a week or two ago, but 
Boston College, number one in EPA per pass. But Mizzou, number one in EPA per pass allowed. So we talked about this earlier in, in one of the other matchups, like strength on strength. This, this I'm very excited for this game, despite this being a two-score spread. You know, this opened at 15. Um, our number puts it at 14. So a little bit of value on uh, on Boston College here. But I don't know, guys. This one, this one to me feels like a sneaky, sneaky good game. And one where I... I'm a lot higher. Just someone talked me out of Boston College and like wanting to sprinkle on them to win the ACC at this point. Oh, damn! Ooh, ooh. Actually, it didn't even cross my mind that mm. that could be a value bet. The problem is, I think the ACC is just so top heavy. Like, I don't know anybody can beat Miami. Like, uh, yeah, burn so, your burn your SMU bets. Like, those are deader yeah, than dead. Yeah. Like, like so one, we, one us other... three could be an offensive line for SMU better than than what they have. Like, Eesh. what's yeah. the what's so, the price? 3500 you can get right now. And uh, oh, a scheduled crazy. tidbit, you know, looking ahead for who they face. They yeah. they avoid yeah, yeah. Miami. They have to face SMU, which, okay, yeah, not a big deal anymore. They face Louisville, who is currently ranked, I believe. But nobody nobody else, really, that, that mm. pops off the page. So well, it sounds like the perfect uh, situation to use the unabated odds uh, or the uh, season simulator to see what the uh, value is. But... Uh, you can use the Massey Peabody ratings and it'll give you a number, but I, I won't be surprised based off who they beat and who they played that it shows value. Okay, but let's not let's not jump ahead to let's focus okay. on this matchup here for a second here. So again, we, we kind of established Boston College good in passing the ball, Mizzou. Surprisingly, based on at least based on last year's performance, good at defending the pass again through a couple games and maybe subpar competition, but pass and rush. Okay, fine. Pass we, have and them, rush. we have the number one against the pass at 20 21st against the rush. Um, again, you, to your point, they're number one in echo rate over ex, or points per echo. They've given up zero. Um, so that's impressive because Mizzou, that was supposed to be their Achilles heel. There's this defense is supposed to struggle now to your point. Who have they played? Okay, fair. But, you know, the, the interesting thing here is Mizzou stands out to me last year being really a past team, past efficient team. They're 11th rushing efficiency for Mizzou. So that's how they're getting a lot of their efficiency. BC, they can pass, they can throw. The question for me here is, is this going to be uh, both teams running the ball and and kind of dominating a ground and pound game? If so, I, I'm with you, Kevin, like a 15, a 15 and a half. It's really, really difficult to, to cover big spreads if you're having long methodical drives based off rushing efficiency. Yeah, we well, think that's difficult. Try 17 because that's where it's moved as of earlier today. So, I mean, I, I can't talk you off that ledge. And quite frankly, you know, this is one of the ones where I really haven't been a big BC or, you know, Mizzou kind of follower per se. But I mean, just from a, a, a value standpoint at 17, or especially at 17 and a half, if this continues to move, because they did jump two points at Circa kind of almost immediately. If there is any 17 and a half, I don't know how you stay away from this. Um, You know, I, I look at, you know, we talk about Boston College and yes, they have that NFL type offense. Shout out Bill O'Brien coming down there and running the ship here. Thomas Castellanos is actually ranked number fourth, uh, you know, from a PFF grade uh, quarterback in the nation, which, which shocked me. I can tell you that much. Um, and, and so, yeah, I think this is going to be the first real matchup for Mizzou. I definitely don't expect Boston College to be Buffalo or Murray State that Mizzou is shutting out. I mean, that's no discredit to them, but this is going to be a different league. This is going to be a, a true test here. Yeah. So um, 17 and a half, though, I think that might be just a little too much. You know, Mizzou no, came too in. Much. Yeah, I mean, Mizzou came in with 114th of the schedule, and they got the 31st remaining. So, I mean, this is kind of the one where I'm I'm trying not to get too hype on Mizzou because things are going to get real in the SEC. It's going to get real going here forward. And we're going to see what this team is really made of. But I think at 17, you, you got to take the points. I mean, if it's 2% value here, it's going to be – Right. The only question becomes if you regress to the market later and later – you may move through, you may not make it 14 anymore. You may make it more like 15. And then maybe you, you once you don't cross through the, the, you know, the, some of those key numbers, you lose a lot of your expected value, but 17 seems like a lot. Yeah, exactly. Right. So I'm looking, I'm looking forward to this one personally. I think this will be a sneaky, sneaky, good game. I agree. At least based on matchups. So, all right, that was, that was our matchup previews here. So we got a little nitty gritty. Let's hit zoom out for a second here. A couple weeks into the season here. Let's pull up our efficiency landscape here. Ooh. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, interesting stuff. So I, we talked we we talked about this a lot and have talked about it uh, on our on our TikTok page as well. But Seth, give me your give me your one team that either you think is overperformed or what, what's what's our number one power rank team at this current moment? Oh, baby. Ohio Ohio. State. Yeah, Ohio State. It's 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 they're one point better than Georgia. So it goes Ohio State, Georgia, Texas, and good old Rocky Top, Tennessee. And then Mm. the the interesting thing is then your top six are um Bama, Ole Miss, Mizzou. So I mean SEC represent. And they all play each other. (laughs) Literally. Alabama, Mizzou, Tennessee, Ole Miss, Georgia, they all play each other. Um, I think Mizzou plays the least amount of those teams um, mm-hmm. and Texas. I forgot to throw Texas in there, but um, yeah, so it's going to get ugly. It's going to get ugly. I- I'm still very curious on who old Miss is. I am not convinced. I-, I went into the season, not convinced they've played two really easy teams. They looked efficient. Sure. They have played nobody. I still am looking for, we're finally going to get them playing an FBS team in wake forest. We're on that spoiler alert. I'm shout out the model. You know, I hope it's right because I really want to be a fader of Ole Miss. I I am not sold. To me, they're very similar to Florida State. They use the portal to fill in a lot of their gaps, and I'm not sure that that's the way you can go. You can just throw a kind of portal at all of your problems. I still think you need player development. Yeah, interesting. I'm looking at their uh, I'm looking at their schedule right now. Yeah, so wake wake this. Wake this week, but yeah. So they play LSU in a couple weeks. You gotta get Oklahoma, Oklahoma which bleh. yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I don't know. I I wanna I want to I want to follow you on that thought, Seth. But um, easy schedule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of, kind of at at, at a high level. So if I get I to fade them in the playoffs, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I'll take that for sure. For sure. Uh, Steve, yeah. Any what about from you? Any any team that you think has uh, overperformed your expectations, or surprised to see where they're standing a couple weeks into the season here? I mean, I think you got to go Texas. I, I don't know, maybe say I'll call it surprise, surprise, right? Because they came in definitely preseason as ranked to be a really good team, but and we're gonna see what happens once they get into the thick of of true blown uh, SEC play. But you know, we talked about that that matchup last week with Michigan and how the data show that that was gonna have the potential to be an absolute bloodbath. And it really was. And, you know, again, how much of that was Michigan versus how much of that was Texas? The rest of this, the year, we'll kind of figure that out. But right now, I mean, they're looking like Texas football is back. And I don't say that lightly by any means. I am probably as pro-Texas having the actual chance to do something in the CFP as I'm anti-Dallas Cowboys <laughs> having a chance to do something in the NFL playoffs. Oh, God, what, a, what a dichotomy. <laughs> yeah, Texas looks good, man. Texas yeah. looks good. And they have, sure, sure other do. than Georgia, I, I'm right. still not convinced with Ohio State either. I have to say, like, we have not seen Akron covered against them, period, in week one. I mean, you know, Ohio State can take some time, I understand, but, uh, you know, I don't know that we're seeing just uh, – to me, Georgia has has the one of the bigger resumes so far. That win over Clemson and doing it in dominant fashion I think is a lot bigger of a deal than people are realizing – Clemson's still a good team, yeah. and they show that against App State. Tell App State they're not a good team. <laughs> um, and so, to me, they're the ones that have kind of played team, you know, some team talent early and have dominated. You could put Texas in that in that category as well. I mean, what they did in Michigan was was a big deal. I agree. We don't know. I mean, we knew Michigan offensively wasn't going to be there, but defensively, you thought they could maybe hang around, right? But I think they dominated that game both offensively and defensively texas did so texas looks good texas looks good yeah can we talk about real quick about underperformers though because can i just start an entire conference big 10 i mean you kind of you kind of hit on ohio state yeah. oregon who again like yeah sure they're they're two and oh but i mean boise state and idaho combined what 13 points you know between the two and then penn state penn state <laughs> damn near lost that's 34 and a half point favorite. So, um, you know, for me, though, I guess the bigger picture I take around that is that that Big Ten is wide open. And uh, we talked on previous episodes about how to position, you know, the Big Ten runner up for CFP playoff kind of positioning for maybe some value there. 
But to me, as with that being wide open and Penn State being relatively long odds to win the Big yeah. Ten, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm hard pressed to not put a little bit of money on Penn State to come out of that that conference. Uh, but it just, I, I haven't seen much to say, hey, oh, it's it is X teams conference unquestionably. If you, yeah, I mean, it's a good point. Can you pull up the uh, air? Can we pull up the uh, matchup map here? I mean, one of the things that jumped out at me, we talked about it last week, was the weighted EPA. Oregon was dead last last week. They they got a little bit better this week, but this is a team that is struggling on offense. Yeah. To your point, if you're looking to the Big uh, Big Twelve uh, or sorry, Big Ten, Notre Dame and Ohio State to me are you know kind of two of the the better bets you can make. Obviously, Ohio State's highly touted. Penn State, after that Bowling Green kind of make it out alive, this is starting to be some of the last times I think you're going to be able to buy them at a cheap price. I don't know that Oregon is who we thought they were. Um, now, mm -hmm. it's it's kind of the breakup where everybody gets worse. Oklahoma doesn't seem to be able to, to be the team they were last year, but Oregon doesn't seem to be being able to just replace Bo Nix like no problem. So um, I'm with you, Big Ten. I mean, but shout out Rutgers. They're covering yeah. machine. Yeah, yeah. Give credit where credit is due. Okay, and, and I don't. And, and I'm sorry, just real quick because you know, from an Illinois guy here, shout mm -hmm. out, NIU. shout out Northern Illinois yeah. University for taking down Notre Dame and you Illinois know, taking down uh, Kansas. That? Illinois taking down Kansas. Yeah, yeah. Illinois yeah. unite. <laughs> shout out, shout out. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off on that thought. No, no, no. no all good. Just, but speaking of uh, maybe to segue here, speaking of taking down the competition model versus the board, baby, let's get into week three predictions because we had a weekend last week, boys. Um, yeah, Twelve and three. Looking looking ahead, so sitting sitting where we're currently seventeen and ten through two weeks of the model, we went five and seven um, week one, and then had a had a really good week two performance overall to bring to bring the running total to running record to seventeen and ten. So. A lot of good, a lot of lot of volume again, as we kind of yep. uh, have come to expect from the from the college model here. Again, we talked about this when the numbers kind of when we were running through the opening lines, and we had a lot of disgusted fit looks on our faces for for lack of a better way of saying it. A lot of dogs, lot and of dogs. just a lot of teams that you just want to. Yeah, it just doesn't it doesn't really get the blood flowing a little bit, but you know what. We've we've I, we say this time and time again, boys. Like you you, sta you stare at the you stare at the model output and you see like okay, wow, there's value. Never would have thought it. Trust the process, okay. Trust the yeah. process. Trust the output, um, and trust the value. So here is the card for week three, Seth. I want to punt it to you real quick. Um, yeah. Again, a lot of dogs, but what is one where you're like, yes, I, I feel smart about this, or on the opposite, you're like, shit, take this off yeah. the card. I wish I had one for you. I don't feel smart about any of these picks at all. I'm going to run through them. Um, and because the, 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 you know, that has a good, that's most of them, but with some of them, we, we got, you know, different prices. So for model uh, week, wait, what are we week three, week three model, we have Thursday, Arizona uh, state university minus one and a half. That's becoming a team we bet on a lot. Um, Indiana minus two and a half. San Diego State plus 17 and a half. UAB plus 21. Wake plus 23 and a half. Wisconsin plus 15 and a half. Um, UNIT, or sorry, North Texas plus 12 and a half. Middle Tennessee plus eight and a half. Wyoming plus nine. Purdue plus 13 and a half. Memphis plus five and a half. And TCU minus one and a half. So that's the card for week three. Um, man. I don't like any of these. I really want to bet Alabama. We're betting Wisconsin. I actually no, that's not true. F Ole Miss. I don't believe in Ole Miss yet, so I'm happy we're betting on on um on Wake Forest. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like like I said, a lot of a lot of a lot of dogs this weekend. So a lot of dogs. The dogs hopefully are barking. Mm -hmm. In Memphis, love Memphis. Yeah. Love 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 that bet. Mm -hmm. Go dogs and go Tigers. I don't even. I don't even. Some of these teams. I don't even like. I, I literally, I had to look. MTSU, Middle Tennessee. I didn't, you know, you. Yeah, right. It's we're, we're deep in the back. Steve, Steve, save us here a little bit, man. We're we're both feeling kind of yeah. gloomy about oh, this I, weekend, but oh, oh, I have same nothing way? for you. I have <laughs> nothing for you. No, no. I will say, um, I do. I just from a, a sheer 
market standpoint, I actually do love the North Texas. We got a ton of CLB on that already. So that makes you feel a little bit better. Um, I do love the Memphis bet. Uh, I feel a little worse about the Purdue bet because Notre Dame just lost only because Purdue mm. at home against ranked teams, they're the ranked team killer. Uh, but uh, I, I, but again, in all seriousness, I do feel okay about that bet. Um, you know, for me, looking at this, I, I, Iowa versus Iowa State was a was a very eye opening, and I, I was very big on Iowa, and I, I still in the back of my mind, for some reason, I just can't shake the fact that they are who probably we think they are. They just had one really good game. Um, and, and again, like if you had said in any other year in Iowa modern history, you know, 20 points, 22 whatever points, like, oh, Iowa's not doing that. Um, but, you know, this, this offense and this ability to maybe put up some and always gives me a little bit of pause. But other than that, yeah, I think it's one of those things you're going to hear us say this time and time again. Oh, this car looks disgusting. All oh, this bet looks horrible. And then those are the ones that we tend – the ones we tend to not like actually do fairly yeah. well. I do want to point that out. You will see Troy versus um, Iowa on there. It was a no bet because Troy's quarterback um, has some injury concerns. So you mm -hmm. will have seen it on that card. You wouldn't have seen us talk about mm -hmm. it. It's because we did not bet it due to injury. And quick, uh, quick public service announcement again, just as a reminder for you guys. So mentioned we had model performed really well this past week and 12 and three overall. And then, you know, we put that on our socials as we should, frankly, but just a quick caveat, you know, again, we, season long projections, you know, the, our model is projected to hit at a win rate at about 56, 58%, right? So going at a crazy good weekend like this past weekend is frankly not to be expected every single week, right? Um, and there will be weeks we, we've seen like the college Seth, correct me if I'm wrong here. The college model, unlike the NFL version of it is more subject to variance week in and week out, not only because of the volume, but, um, it, well, this early in the season, 100% because these teams have turnover that is not like yeah. the NFL at all. Yeah. So we have a preseason prior that we use for all these teams and it's a double edged sword. So either your prior is not accurate because a team is completely different than who they were or a team is playing this season very differently than who they were last year and your priors bringing them back to earth a la iowa which is why we were not high on iowa last week right you don't want to, you usually don't want to get ahead of yourself but but this season is maybe a the the, the first time where maybe in some sense you do want to get ahead of yourself think about michigan um, team that's really good, really, really, really good on paper. Last year, your preseason prior is the best team, but then they lost so much this this year. Wh who are they this year? So the early, the early weeks are the most var that has the most variance. It's a lot of volume because the whole market is trying to figure these teams out, not just us. So it's a lot of volume and a lot of variance. So just buckle up. Um, I'll leave you with this as a as a um, to be as negative as I can. Week three is for sure the biggest bloodbath of all the years and all the back testing. Week three is 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 a, it can be a slaughter of a week. So I will I will up. just add one one bit of flavor to that. Peel back behind yeah. the curtain a little bit. We're we're doing some last minute oh, yeah, stuff yeah. before yeah. before week two kicks off, and Seth and I are having a conversation. He's like, oh, that's, things aren't looking good, man. This I think week two is going to be an absolute at bloodbath. Close. Yeah, yeah, at close, at close. But even I'm getting like, the deja vu feeling here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm a, I'm a pessimist at heart. Yeah, which you but know I don't what? let it stop me. I still bet all these. Yeah, you know, follow us on picket. It's, it's good. It's probably good to be better to be a, a skeptic slash cynic in a, a, as as a model oh, yeah, yeah, as yeah. opposed to as opposed yeah, to an you, optimist. So, yeah. all right, looking forward to another jam packed weekend. Looking forward to a lot of um, a lot of good games, and hopefully the model can continue its winning streak. So. Boys, it's been real. It's going to be a fun one. We'll be back next week. As always, boys and girls, again, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It does us a great favor. So appreciate y'all tuning in. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace.